Hello, this is Mike from Grady'sPitchingSchool.com, and we're going to do a review today of Brock. Brock is a junior, and he at this point is getting some Division One interest. You're going to see uh, Brock having very good mechanics, and he really generates a lot of power and drive toward the plate, and really has an efficient delivery. So a couple things he can work on, uh, but this is going to be a good example of a lot of things that are right within a pitching delivery. So let's take a look at Brock. Let's take a look at him full speed. We see him really get down to the mound uh, quickly and really well extended uh, all the way through release point. So uh, let's stop Brock now at his balance point, and we're going to get up into his balance point. The one thing that we notice is that he is really leading with his hip. His hip is out in front. Oops. There it is right there, and uh, it's way in front of his, his uh, knee there. And as we start the video and you can see that the hip is moving past that line so Brock early in his delivery is generating momentum toward the plate and that's a really important thing uh, when we when we get in our balance point to start creating forward momentum because that eventually turns into velocity uh, so as we see Brock start to uh, get down the mound he starts to separate his hands right as his knee starts to drop his hands start to drop and that's kind of a uh, that's really good timing. We want to see knee drop, hands drop, because as Brock starts to move forward, what we want to see is his hand get up, his hand, his throwing hand get up pretty quickly into what we call the high cock position, so that when he does start to rotate the hips, he is not late with his throwing hand. Uh, a pitcher who is late with his throwing hand will miss uh, usually arm side high, and uh, on top of that, they'll lose velocity. So in this case, we're looking for when. Brock's front foot hits the ground, where is his throwing hand? You can see it's, it's almost to its peak position. It's close enough to where uh, we can tell from this point that Brock's not going to be late. Uh, he's going to be right on time, and, and in fact, this was a very good pitch. Uh, it was a strike, uh, low, low strike at the knees. Also at this point, there's something that he does very well, is his hips have opened up. You can see his toe pointing toward home plate, so that's indication of his hips have opened up. And his shoulders are still closed. His front elbow is still pointing right at home plate. So this is a good example of hip-to-shoulder separation. Uh, we want to see the hips open up uh, just prior to the shoulders opening up. So you can see right here that the shoulders are still closed. And by doing this, Brock can create extra torque and, and rotation when he does finally come through and open up those shoulders, and, and it helps him create extra velocity. So let's bring Brock through release point. Now you can see... You can see the momentum moving forward. You can see Brock's back leg is really starting to straighten out. And that's a good thing uh, because that's going to help him create extension. And that extension is going to help him uh, get out in front with his release point. And as we can see, as he moves to that point, you can see him extend right there, right along that line. And uh, his release point is almost right at the end of the mound. So there's an advantage to that because uh, the further out you release the ball, the less distance is traveling. And to the hitter's eye, it looks faster uh, than if you re were releasing it uh, a little bit earlier. So Brock has a little bit of a sneakiness to him because uh, whatever his velocity is, it really actually looks harder because he's getting so well extended. As we extend through release point you can see that arm pronate and that arm finish down past the knee and the follow through come up really the follow through occurs because Brock has such good momentum and he brings that back leg up and down and finishes in a good fielding position a couple of little, th little things Brock can work on is first we don't want to get bent into the back knee uh, too soon we want to use that back knee to kind of flex forward. So he's just a little bit bent here. It's something that uh, he could try to see if he can feel extra momentum by kind of playing with that angle of the knee. Uh, that's one little thing. As we're coming through that front leg, he stays closed pretty good here. He could even try to keep those that front leg closed just a little bit longer before it opens up. It kind of swings open right here, his front knee of his stride leg just starts to swing open a little bit and if we could keep that those hips closed as long as possible that can help create when he does open up extra rotation 
but overall, this is a really good example of a delivery that is repeatable and is consistent. And uh, we did talk about velocity. Brock's velocity is above average. Uh, but where he really does well is he locates well uh, and he's consistent and, uh, and he does change speeds well too. So if you look at really what's really important is the ability to consistently locate your pitches, uh, change speeds. And this is a good example of, of really generating a lot of velocity uh, from the delivery here. And um, he's not really wasting much energy as he's getting down the hill. And that's what we wanted every pitcher to really maximize the, the available velocity they have. Uh, every pitcher has kind of their peak where they, where they can throw, and it's different, and Brock's getting to that max point. His velocity is going to continue to improve as he gets stronger, as his arm gets stronger, and as he works on little mechanical things. Um, but overall, this is a good example of a very um, repeatable and very good pitching uh, delivery.